Okay, so hey guys, and welcome back to another interview. Today I'm here with David Calder. David, how are we do? I'm very good, thanks, mate. How are you? I'm doing amazing, mate. Thank you very much, Anne. So, I mean, today you're here for Paige Murney in Leicester. She's got victorious, and so how was that victory? Uh, do you know what? I'm absolutely on the moon for her because uh, she's been out a while. Um, a lot of pressure. She puts a lot of pressure on herself. Hometown, big production, big show. It had a big show feeling, didn't it? Crowd were buzzing. It's a lot of pressure on a kid. It's, it's the second fight. She's fighting somebody that's boxed at world level. Um, got a winning record. Good fight, a very good fight. And an awkward, tricky fight as well. Not somebody that's just there easy to it. Um, so I thought she performed really, really well. And the experience that she got in that fight is invaluable for where she's going to go. Because she's going to go right up there to the top. But she needs fights like that where she's not going to get rid of them in a round or two. It's, you know what I mean? It's going to go the distance. It's going to go the rounds. Those sort of fights, when she steps up into into better, you know, more competitive fights where somebody's trying to win, what that's going to do is the experience will come out because the, the girls will leave more gaps. She'll be able to capitalise. You know, she's learned one or two things from that fight already. She's got it in her head now. She knows to put forward into the next one anyway. Um, so I'm over the moon with it. Really am. Indeed, and I mean for herself now she's come back and she's bit, had a little bit of time off, like you said, but she's come back now. Are you wanting her to have quite an active year this year? Yeah, I would do. It too. Yeah, I would. I would do. I'd, I'd like her to, to, you know, we're coming up, we're coming up towards summer now, so she'll start getting a little bit scarcer. But I'd like to get her out in the summer, um, and then, you know, towards the end of the year, then, you know, the the training wheels will come off. And I suppose just in the way that the women division is at the moment, possibly five, six fights could be looking for titles. And so, do you think it won't be too far for her? Yeah, and that's why it's invaluable for her to get experience like she got tonight. Because if she's just blown her away, she wouldn't have got that experience. And like you say, in the women's game, you only have an handful of fights and you fight for these titles. So we want her to get the experience. As long as she's following instructions and she's she's learning and she's she's delivering in that terms, as long as the coach is happy, that's all that matters. You know, me and Oge work really well together. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of what he does with it, with all his team in the, in the gym. Um, and we're on the same page in, t in terms of uh, what page is. Um, and um, so, yeah, we've, we've just got to just gotta make sure that everything gets ticked as it goes along. And she's not rushed. Um, and she gathers the experience on the way through. Indeed, and now just to move on to another one of your fighters, Muhammad Ali. I'm really liking the look of him. He's seemingly shaping up to be a, a very good fighter. And so how much potential do you see him having? He's got bags of potential. He's got bags of potential. He's very, very young. So I'm always I'm always over cautious, a bit more protective rather than a promoter would be where they like see him start thinking, oh, he's good him, start stinging him. I'm like, no, no, no. Um, he's only young, he's only 18. Um, he's getting some great experience sparring with Jordan Gill, with Stephen Keynes in the gym, um, which does some rounds with Hopi as well. Um, so he's getting great experience. He's great to work with because he just wants to learn. He just wants to develop and, and soak it up. Um, and you've you know you've probably seen him around ringside. And he, he's such he's, he's such a nice kid. I, I like the fact that he's he's very very flash in the ring, but out of the ring he's 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 very humble. He's very he's very coachable as well. Indeed, and I mean you've got a couple of good fighters over with Matchroom at the moment, and just to speak about another one, Hopi Price. Of course, his fight just recently got announced, and it's a good tough test for him, Beach Junior. And so, how do you think he's going to fare with that test? I'm I'm loving this because everywhere tonight, everybody's coming up to me and telling me about this fight. Oh, that's a good fight. That's what you want to. That's what you want. You know, it, it makes me kind of like. I'm not, it sounds so. I'm 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 even more proud. Of hope because he he wants to take these steps and and also the fact that I uh, that's the 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 plan that I've got for him it's it's nice when you're proud of your kid because you jump in steps jump in levels you know um, it is it's a good fight it's a very good fight and um, I took it because Beach is just coming off a, a British and Commonwealth title challenge this is Opie's first fight at featherweight um, and it's the experience again I want him to to soak up from while he's in that ring. Beach will give him problems that he's not faced before. Um, you know, and but having said that, if if Obi performs like like I see him in the gym every day, then it's gonna be a really good announcement of his of his capabilities in the Featherweight division. Can't wait, mate. And uh, just to speak about Jordan Gill now, of course, of course, unfortunately, he is coming off the loss and things haven't really been the best for him at the moment. And how is he doing mentally wise? He's doing, uh, thanks for asking. He's doing great. Um, obviously, frustrating times, um, but 
he's he's very very professional he's getting on with his job he's learning he's getting better um, we're getting some great sparring so we'll we while while things aren't going great in terms of promoters giving us dates and things like that um he's taking care of business making sure that he's a better fighter than what he was when he fought last time um moved with sue featherweight i don't know if you're aware of that um it's one of those where i mean i'm not making excuses look at him on the scales against kiko it's not that he didn't do the white right it's just that he's, he's 28 now and he's just got to the point in his last couple of fights it's been very very hard to make the weight um and when you've got a title especially when you're a jordan gill and you're not a a superstar prospect or, or you know a big cog in the, in the promoter's wheel that's your bargaining chip you can't just go oh i'm gonna move up and wait yeah. and nine times out of ten a fighter you know loses and then moves up it's not about making excuses for loss it's just that kiko was a better man on the night but you could see in that fight every time kiko touched him he went down and that's not jordan yeah. and you know since then watching him in sparring he's taking shots there's no, he's back to how Jordan was sparring when he's heavier, you know. Um, so yeah, so he's gonna um, he's gonna box at super featherweight, and uh, I've got all confidence in the world him at super featherweight. I just need to get him out in an eight round. I'm not, you know, being offered to just sling him straight in with a big, you know, big fight. I, no, he's, he's just come off a bad loss. I think when you've, you know, when you've been European champion, been Commonwealth champion, when you've done things like that. I think you deserve to have a fight back. There's there's plenty of other fighters that get brought back with, with a little eight rounder. Um, before, you know, I'm not asking for three, four fights. I want one fight and then we go back again and we go into big fighters again. Of course, and I know people are very quick to kind of jump on the bandwagon and deliver hate to any fighter. And I suppose it's good to hear that he is mentally getting through that all good. Yeah, no, he's fine. He's fine. He's, he's got a great family. He's got, you know, the, the, the guys in the gym, we're all very, very close. Um, yeah, he's, he's sound. Good to hear, mate. And so, I mean, to speak about Hopi Price some more, I suppose, on his uh, undercard for Dalton Smith. And Dalton Smith, I mean, he was here today, had a good chat with him, and he looks very prepared for his Sam Maxwell fight. And so what do you make of that fight, him trying to unify the uh, British belt? He's, he's, uh, he's, I like Dalton. I like his attitude. I like his character. I like his, his, his punch pickings. Like his punch picking is fantastic. It really is. Um... I think it's a real good fight because Sam's a good fighter as well. Sam's, uh, you know, he's experienced. He had loads of experience in amateurs. Um, both good amateurs, but I think the Sam boxing WSB is literally like being pro. Yeah. Um, so Sam's very experienced. Um, I just think that because Dalton is very, very calculated and very, very um, intelligent in the ring, um, I think that that goes in his favour because he, he, he doesn't it doesn't make a lot of mistakes and i think in fights like this where you know it's good good fights good even money fights when you're looking at them i think that that's what makes a lot of difference is the guys that that are a little bit you know a little bit cuter and not tending to make those mistakes pick the right time to go and the right time not to go of course and i mean i'm looking forward to that fight mate and so just a couple of questions upon yourself when you are looking for fighters to take on what kind of like mental kind of credentials are you after um well firstly i don't i don't look for fighters to come they, I, I get asked and i keep saying no everybody that i train in my gym you ask them I, I said no originally i said no to the parents i said no no to the management but then i get to meet them <laughs> and then if i get on with them really well and i just they're just nice people um and i know that i get a feeling that they're not going to be an headache very very coachable um then i tend to uh, go on and I'll, I'll train you um but it's it's more the mental side to be honest because the you know you could anybody that wants to learn you can coach anybody that, that wants to learn and that has got a good mentality um that not every you know not every bad thing is the end of the world and not every good thing means that you're, you're on top of the world keeping that sense of reality 
anybody like that can always improve and always can can always go really really far in whatever career it is um and so yeah i look at the mental side of things a little bit more than anything obviously don't get me wrong if if you know i'm at a stage and you know, I'm, I'm i'm coming up to 48 mm. and my body's falling to bits so if the you know without being rude if they're absolutely useless and they're going to be punching from all over the place and, and I'm going to be getting damaged for nothing because they're not going to go in it, then, you know, I'd rather try and guide them management-wise to, to have them the best career that they can for their level and for their abilities, potential abilities, than, than put... Because the time and effort for training fighters, it's not the gym work. You know, the gym work's hard enough, the physicality is hard enough, but then it's you're going home and then you thinking about what you've worked on you're thinking about what you need to work on you're looking at sparring you're studying opponents you're studying other fights and thinks what, what things that they need to do you're looking at the sparring and thinking well you need to do this you need to watch that so we can do this there's so many different things so mentally it's very very draining mm. um and it's very very time consuming mm. and i've never professed to say that oh you know my my be all and end all is i'm a boxing coach mm. and that's it no i'm 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 a dad mm. and uh, you know I, i've got a family i'm a husband and, and so I I go out of my way to balance that life out mm-hmm. so I can never finish in the gym after three o'clock because mm-hmm. from three o'clock I'm around my kids mm-hmm. up to then fine yeah. and then when the kids get to bed that's when I'll do the, the studying and the videos that are watching of, of, of YouTubes and, and sparring tapes and things like that that's when I'll do all that sort of things but if I have more than five fighters then that'll start diluting the home side of things which i'm not going to do mm. um so some so, you know some people can say i'm not a proper trainer fair enough i'm not a proper trainer i i look after as long as i can give the maximum to the fighters i work with i don't go over and i don't take more fighters i'm happy with that and i can give the maximum to my family so that's my balance so that's why i don't have many fighters mm. No, that's completely understandable and I mean I don't want to take up too much of your time I'll leave with this final kind of question how would you like to be remembered in boxing oh wow it's a really good a couple of really good questions not like everybody else um just I've just I've all I love the sport um and I've always just tried to do my best whether I'm good at it or not I try to do my best um and just someone that when people have trusted me with their their career and, and I'm coaching them I've tried my best mm. and sometimes I've managed to make them successful for what they are and sometimes I haven't but all I can say is that I, I do give my best and that's it of course mate that's seen everybody can see that mate and uh, I appreciate your time very much thank you very much mate thank legend you. That. thank you cheers Thanks.